Hey, good morning. Just a week ago, I uh, asked my readers in the Telegram group we have uh, to help me uh, find some interesting news which I can comment on. And Bruno volunteered and uh, suggested me an article on Forbes by uh, Teresa Ghilarducci, if I correctly pronounce the last name, which is called uh, How Big Firms Keep Wages Low. The gist of the article is uh, quite simple. First of all, Teresa is saying that uh, the average pay of uh, American workers is growing every year, but uh, growing quite slow, being adjusted to the inflation rate just by 1% per, per year. That's too slow for her. And the second point she's making is that uh, the gap between low wages and high wages is growing. And that seems to be uh, like bad news for her. And then she's saying that uh, these two uh, symptoms are perfectly explainable by uh, the, the theory called monopsony. This is the first time I hear this word. And it's close to monopoly. While in monopoly, companies control the market and do not allow other sellers to get in because they are large and they control the prices. In case of monopsony, employers control the market and they do not allow uh, employees and other companies to play with the wages and they demand those salaries to stay at certain level and they don't go up. Two trends which I definitely need to comment on. The first one is the average salary goes up too slow. Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, I think that for us, people who want to see the world where employees are getting money for the results they deliver, this trend is actually a bad trend. We want people to be freelancers. And the free freedom is the key word there. We want people to get money, not for the time they spend in the office, in the project, for the employer, but for actual results they deliver. The code they write, the burgers they flip, the music they compose, um, the, the, the kids they teach, whatever. But the results you deliver, you get the money for. This trend, which tells us that the average pay, those employers who are now employing people as office slaves, as people who are getting money for the time, is growing. So they are paying more and more every year bribing those people who, who actually can and want and would be freelancers by giving them more and more every year. 1% per year, Teresa is saying that the trend is that the speed is low. I'm happy about that. I would see the speed go down. I would love to see those wages, those, those monthly salaries or weekly salaries to go down. I don't want them to go up. The less they pay those full-time employees, the better for us, for bureaucracy and for the trend which we're leading right now. We want people to get money for results. We don't like to see people being bribed by those employers who pay them for the week, not for the results they deliver. So I hope you understand my point. The more they give them, the, the, the worse for us. We don't want those employers, they want those office slaves to get more every year. We want them to get less so that they come to us and they start working for result and they start getting more money every week, every day, every month, but in a different uh, arrangement, in a different type of contract. The next one is pay gap. Some people get less, some people get more. It seems unfair. It seems like inequality uh, in the society. It's not good for companies, not good for employers. I disagree on that. I think we are different. We can produce different results differently. I'm not a talented music composer. I can't write music. I cannot flip burgers. I can't cook. I'm not a talented chef. I cannot teach people. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a professor. I don't know how to do that. I can write Java code, for example. Imagine the situation there a company needs to write music and they hire two people. They hire me, who is not talented in music at all, and they hire somebody who actually knows how to write music and he's got a gift. And then we write together for a whole day. And then by the end of the day, I get $100 and he gets $100. I, that would be unfair to me, unfair to him as well, because we created different sort of music. My music, my song, nobody will like to listen to, but his product will be great. So we have to be paid differently. Most likely I have to be fired and that, that person has to stay. In case of music composing, it's easy to do because the final product 
is obvious. Everybody will be able to see that, you know, my, my song sucks, so just get out. And his song is great, so he's getting uh, $1,000, not $100. In case of music composing, it's easy. In case of Java programming, it's not so easy. It's more difficult. I'm a Java programmer. I'm in the office thinking, being at the meetings, talking, doing some research, installing my Windows for the, for the seventh time. And, and I'm doing some work. I'm being in the office. I'm a human. He's a human. So we are equal. We are supposed to be paid equally. So I demand the same salary. I'm totally against uh, pay inequality. But that's absurd. Because that guy actually writes something, it produces the code, and he's got a gift for programming. And I, for example, don't have the gift for programming. I should do something else. Maybe I should flip burgers, or maybe I should do graphic design. Maybe I should go for uh, teaching kids in schools how to write and read. So I'm not a good fit for this job, and, I'm, and I shouldn't be paid as everybody else. We are different by design. We need to be paid differently. But... It's not easy to do for many jobs. For some jobs, it's easy, like music composing. But for many other jobs, it's difficult. And the equality, which we so much want to see, means only one thing. means the management is weak. The management is not strong enough. The management is stupid or not smart enough to make it obvious why that programmer gets more and why that programmer gets less. So the management is not strong enough to justify the decision of why uh, people are getting different salaries. And that's why the management says we should be equal. There's equality. We need to pay the same or close amount of money. We have some junior programmers. We have some seniors, some middle level programmers. Their salaries are close to each other. Well, they differ. They are different because you are a senior. You stay with us for three years. That guy is junior. So... They stay with us for just a few months, so their salaries differ a little bit, or maybe a lot, but still. See, if you compare senior programmers with senior programmers, in many companies you see that companies are trying to make their, their salaries equal. But people are different. We do different things in different speed, at different productivity level, at different quality. Even two senior programmers can deliver absolutely different results in one particular period of time. One day I'm into the work, I can produce something, tomorrow I deliver nothing, but I still get paid. And that equality only creates unfairness in the team, only creates uh, loss of motivation for, for programmers, for people who actually want to contribute. So the larger the pay gap, the stronger the management. So when I see that the company has a large pay gap, that the company, one company, can employ two, three, five people who are getting very different amounts of money for the products they deliver. When one day one person gets $1,000 and another person gets $2 in the same day, that tells me that the management is strong. That's a great company. It's a great management there. That they can still keep people together, still keep them interested to work, and stay strong enough to justify the decisions they make. So nobody get offended by that. So everybody knows why we're getting so different amount of money. That means strong management. So when Teresa is complaining uh, that the gap is growing, I would say that it's great if the gap is growing. But you know, the numbers she's giving us is not exactly um, the correct comparison because she compares uh, low wages, jobs like flipping burgers and the CEO positions on large banks. Of course, they're not at the same uh, industries at all. We need a pay gap inside one similar group of workers, of employees, like programmers or uh, cooks or uh, teachers or um, composers, music composers. And then inside that group, let's take a look at the pay gap. Inside those groups, the pay gap is decreasing now. That's the trend. And that is bad. That is an indicator for me that the management overall in America and other countries is getting weaker and weaker. And the business is just a, is being a hostage to those people who just demand equal pay. They just demand full equality and they produce almost nothing. And the business just being a hostage of this situation and just pays whatever they demand, decreasing the pay gap and growing the salary every month. That's what we see on the market now. I actually wrote a blog post just uh, 
um, just uh, a few weeks ago about exactly that problem. And I said there that uh, we need to get into the situation where good programmers will get 10 times more money than bad programmers. So we need a larger gap between senior developers and, and, and junior developers and between senior developers who produce something and senior developers who don't produce anything. We need a gap between producers and non-producers of results. Thanks for listening. I hope I managed to cover the, <laughs> some news this time. I'll try to do it every week. Again, like I said, if you want to volunteer and send me some, uh, some news which you find interesting, and then I will comment on that, on that piece. I will try to do it um, every week. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.